Hi folks, another health and safety video here with IHSA. I'm Steph Mainville, and today we're gonna to look at how to properly set up a travel restraint and installing a wooden guardrail. Once I put on my harness, I properly adjusted everything, making sure that my dorsal D-ring is in between my shoulder blades, my chest strap is in the middle of my sternum, I got my leg strap properly adjusted, right? Everything looks good, everything's tucked away, not in danger. Now, next thing we're gonna grab is our lanyard. Remember, our lanyard. We're gonna be setting ourselves up in a travel restraint here, right? So physically, I won't be able to fall over the edge. First thing you wanna make sure is that it's a CSA approved piece of equipment. Now, these lanyards can be made of wire rope, synthetic rope, or synthetic webbing. Inspection of your equipment is very important. Again, you're gonna look at the snap hook, making sure that the metal is not broken, rusted, everything falls back into place, the dual action is working. You wanna look for cuts, any types of burns, frayed in the stitching, broken stitching. The stitching should be identical on both sides. And if the lanyard is equipped with a shock absorber like you see on this one here, ensure that the shock absorber has not been deployed. Now you also want to remember that you never store a lanyard around chemicals, leaving them exposed for long periods of time in the direct sunlight. Now the first one that we're going to look at is the inspection of a rope grab, also known as the fall arrester. Now first thing you want to check is that the equipment is a CSA certified piece of equipment, as you see here. Secondly, each rope grab is designed and manufactured for the use with a specific diameter of type of lifeline, usually the 16 millimeter that you see here. And the last thing you want to look for is the rope grab must also be attached to a lifeline in the right direction. So the arrow permanently stamped, etched, or cast onto the fall arrestor, indicating the up position that you see right here. Now, when we go to the inspection of the rope grab, a couple things you want to look at. Number one, you want to look for any types of damaged components, bends, cracks, and signs of wear and tear in the metal. Any signs of rust would be a good indication to take it out of service. Any moving parts not working smoothly in the hinge, in the connections, and any signs of wear and tear in the metal that could be looking fatigued or damaged as well. So some of those are key components that you want to remember when you're grabbing your rope grab, or like I said, fall arrestor. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna be looking at is some lifelines. Now, make sure you wanna inspect your lifelines daily to ensure that they are free of cuts, burns, frays, strands, and abrasion. There are three types of lifelines that we have in the industry. Number one is a vertical lifeline attached above your head. Secondly, you can have one attached behind your back used on a horizontal. And the third one that we have, a very common one, is the SRL, better known as the self-retracting lifeline. Now, all lifelines, like I said, must be inspected, checking for signs of defects, burns, abrasion as you're going through discoloration and brittleness, indicating heat and chemical exposures. The connecting end of a lifeline, when you're doing your inspection, you wanna make sure that everything lines up nicely, that you have a dual action, making sure that these don't open. The thimble must be in place according to the CSA standard. Right? And as you're going through your line, you're looking, like I said, for any cuts, any discoloration, looking inside the webbing, getting all the way to the other end of the lifeline, known as the termination. The termination that prevents from the fall arrestor from falling or passing through. Now, this also must be in accordance with CSA. Lifeline should be free of splices, knots, except at the termination. So everything has been inspected up to this point. Now just to go over some of the best practices, the do's and don'ts, and what some of your anchor points that you can attach yourself to. So when I go to grab the lanyard, again, I've done my inspection. My lanyard's in good condition, right? I've already done all this, all the inspection of the components, the stitching, it's a CSA approved, it's the 16 mil, right? So these are all things that's already been taken into consideration. When I go to grab or put the lanyard on the lifeline, I always like to set myself up in a way that I don't have to really think about how I do it. It's just automatic for me. What I've always done is put the lifeline over my shoulder because that way there I know that this is pointing up and back to the anchor. So when you go and look at the arrow, I open this up here, the arrow automatically points up, put the rope grab on the rope, 
and automatically it is pointing to the anchor. A big common mistake in the industry is setting up the rope grab in the opposite direction. The last thing I always suggest you do is grab the lifeline on the anchor side and the rope grab on the ring and try to pull them apart. That way there you'll know that it's been installed properly. Next step, you're grabbing the snap hook. Snap hook is going on your dorsal D-ring. Go ahead and reach around here, connecting myself to the snap hook. Now I'm ready to go ahead and install my guardrail. I want to get my way to such a position that I'm able to get right to the leading edge without falling over. Good. So now I'm set up in a travel restraint. There's no physical way I can fall over the leading edge. So I'm gonna grab my piece of lumber, right? A two by four spruce, getting it to my height, which is anywhere between 0 0.9 and 1.1 meters. And now making my way to the other side, doing the same thing. Now in this case, we already have something here that's acting as our tow board, so no longer required. The only last thing we need to do now is install the middle rail. The mid rail is anywhere in between the tow board and the top rail. So let's go grab our other two by four spruce lumber. In this case here, we have it at 21 inches or so, and repeating the same step as I just did on the other side. And there you have it folks, a properly installed wooden guardrail. Now I'm Steph Mainville, thank you for watching. Make sure you don't forget to check our IHSA website, ihsa.ca. And also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be a lot more health and safety videos there for you. Stay safe.